The title of Section 7.6 is Function Operations. And there are really two things that I want you to take away from this lesson uh, with the ability to do. And one of them is to be able to utilize, to use correctly each of the four operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, with respect to functions. I want you to be able to perform each of these operations correctly uh, with functions. And then the second half of our lesson will focus on this idea of composite function. What does it mean to find the composite of two functions? So let's start by uh, just looking at some examples uh, that correspond to problems 1 through 12 on your homework assignment. And that is using the various operations with functions. So this particular example gives me two functions, an f function described as negative 2x plus 6, and a g function described as 5x minus 7. The directions tell me to perform each operation. Well, the first one is the operation, of course, of addition. And it basically says to take the f function and add to it the g function. And I've given to you off to the right another way of representing this same operation of these two functions. Just so you won't be confused, the book on one hand may show it like this, and then they may give you the problem later uh, showing that you're supposed to add f and g in this way. It's exactly the same thing, just written in two different forms. So we'll take the f function, which is negative 2x plus 6, and we will add to it the g function, which is 5x minus 7. And this is really just an exercise in combining like terms. Negative 2x plus 5x is 3x, and 6 minus 7 is negative 1. And so the sum of those two functions is 3x minus 1. So it's as simple as that. All right, so we're going to use those same two functions uh, that we used previously. f of x is negative 2x plus 6. And g of x is 5x minus 7. And we're going to do the same thing. So uh, this says, though, to subtract the f function minus the g function. So you do have to be careful with subtraction. Here's the f function, and now I'm subtracting the g function. And I would strongly recommend that when you have subtraction, that you put this second function, the one that's being subtracted, uh, that you put it in parentheses, because this may be a reminder to you that uh, if you think about distributing negative 1, we're going to end up changing both of the signs. Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x, and negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. So not only are you subtracting 5x, you're also subtracting negative 7, which has the same effect as addition. So now we're going to put our like terms together, negative 2x minus 5x, negative 7x, and our constant 6 plus 7, 13, and that is the result. All right, letter C involves multiplication of these same two functions. So we have the f function times the g function. And this should look familiar to you. When we multiply two binomials together, we're going to use the FOIL method. Okay, first terms together, negative 10x squared. Outer terms together would be positive 14x. Inner terms together would be positive 30x. And the last together, multiply together, would be minus 42. Combine like terms, negative 10x squared plus 44x minus 42, and that results in our answer for letter C. Okay, well the next set of problems in your book, 13 through 18, are, are similar 
You're also going to be given a couple of functions, F and G. You're going to be performing whatever the indicated operation is. But then the directions change, and I want to talk about in just a minute, what do I mean by find the domain? Okay, so first of all, let's just take care of multiplying these two functions together. So here's the F function, and we're multiplying that times the G function. So we're multiplying x squared times x to the fourth, that's x to the sixth, and the outer terms together, inner terms together, and last terms together. And then we'll just arrange these so that they're in highest to lowest exponent order, standard form. Alright, so that's the result of multiplying the f function times the g function. Well, what does it mean to find the domain? Well, the domain, another word for domain, there's, there's a couple of ways we refer to domain. We know that domain is the x-coordinate of an ordered pair. The y coordinate is known as the range. We also refer to the x coordinate or the domain as the independent variable because it can be any number, any value we want it to be. Now, y will depend on whatever we choose for x. But there's another uh, term that we use in reference to domain, and that is the word in. And the range, of course, is the result of output. So when you're asked to identify the domain of a function, it really boils down to this. What are the numbers that are allowed to be input into the function? But you've got to keep this in mind. There are two situations that we're really trying to avoid. We're always trying to avoid, if necessary, division by zero because it's not possible to divide by zero. And then another thing that we're trying to avoid, since we've been talking about radicals, is we cannot uh, do the square root or any even root, for that matter, of a negative number. So as we think about numbers that we could input for x, we're keeping in mind avoiding these two situations. Okay. So for my example that we got here, for this, this result, we do not have a fraction anywhere in this expression, so I don't have to worry about the division by zero. We also don't have any radicals anywhere in this expression, so I don't have to worry about any even root of a negative number because there are no roots at all in this expression. So my bottom line here is the domain, and I'll just put the letter D, since I don't have to worry about restricting any numbers as inputs to prevent either of these situations, my domain will be stated as just all real numbers, or you could think of any real number. In other words, any number I want for x, I can use it as an input. And, and in so doing, I don't, I don't have to worry about creating these situations. Okay, well let's contrast that with letter B. Okay, let's do the operation of division. Um, so we're going to be dividing x squared plus 1, that's the f function, divided by the g function, which is x to the fourth minus 1. And before you finish, you, you should always try to simplify these fractions, reduce them if you can. And if possible, to, if it's possible to reduce, then we're going to need to find some way to factor, and the denominator does factor as x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. And in factoring, I see an opportunity now to reduce. We can cancel these x squared plus 1 binomials. So I'm left with this reduced fraction as the result of dividing f by g. Okay, well now I'm ready to state the domain, and uh, once again, I'm looking out for these two possibilities. Well, there are no radicals in this expression, so I don't have to worry about this, but there is the potential of division by zero if x is allowed to be, I allow a couple of numbers to be input 
perhaps. So here's the name state the domain. It could be real all, all real numbers except so we're gonna put some restrictions. We're gonna say that x cannot be positive one because if x is positive one, one minus one is zero, and we get that scenario. But it's also true that if x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is also positive 1, and 1 minus 1 still gives me 0. So I can use any number I want as an input. That's what the domain refers to. I can use any number I want as an input, as long as it's a real number, except I cannot use these two, because in doing so, I create division by 0. Now, it's important to know that even though I marked out this other factor in the canceling process, I should also check it to see if any number in this binomial also creates zero. I mean, as it turns out, there is no possible way to plug a number in to this binomial and get zero. So I don't have to worry about finding another restriction from this binomial. But I just want you to be aware that even though you've marked it out, you still need to check it when it comes to uh, looking for possible restrictions on the domain. Okay, so my complete answer here is here's the result of division, and then here we found the domain. Okay, now let's take a look at composite functions, and this will conclude this lesson, and this should help you on 22 to 34 even. Um, I'm going to let you look at this blue statement and then we'll come back to it after you've actually seen um, how to uh, find the composite of two functions and see if it makes more sense after you've actually seen this in action. The output from the first function becomes the input for the second. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's take example number three. Given two functions, just like before, we're asked to find the composite g and f evaluating using the number 2. So the book shows composite functions using this symbol. Uh, it's like a circle. Uh, it looks like the letter O, but it's really just a symbol, and it stands for the composite of these two functions, g and f. Another way of writing this same composite function notation is this. And this is actually what I prefer. This is, and, and depending on which textbook you end up with, uh, it could be either way. I just want you to know that these two, uh, it's just two different ways of writing the same composite function. But on quizzes and tests in our class, I'm going to represent this composite function as this. And here's how it works. Well, we'll go with the, the way your book represents it, and I'll just show you how it relates to my preferred way of showing it. All right, you always start evaluating the function that's closest to the number for that given number. So in other words, I want to find out what f of 2 is. And remember, in first semester, we started doing this. That just literally means you're going to take the number 2 and... Again, input, domain, x. You're going to input 2 in for x in that function, and you get 8. Okay, so we've basically done the first part of my blue statement here. The output from the first function, 8, becomes the input for the second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the result of f of 2, which was 8, and I'm going to use it as an input in the other function, the g function. So now I'm going to be evaluating g of 8. So that means to replace x in the g function with 8. Evaluate it. Do the power first. 8 squared is 64 plus 7. And my final answer, there aren't two answers. There's just one single answer. And the final answer to this composite function is 71. Okay, so let's try a couple more. Um, oh, I meant to 
show you how this relates to my preferred way of doing it. Just think of it this way. I think this makes sense. Remember what we got for f of 2 was 8. Okay, so just think of you found f of 2 and 8 literally was superimposed on top of f of 2 so that now you're finding g of 8. Okay, so I just want you to be aware of these two mean exactly the same thing. All right, so let's take a look. Um, this is the composite uh, f and g using negative 2. So you want to evaluate g of negative 2 first. So that means just replace the x in the g function with negative 2 and simplify. And you get negative 7. Now the output from the first function, which in this case was g, you always start with the function closest to the number. Now you're going to let negative 7 be input into the f function. So be careful here that you always do the always do powers before you multiply. So this is like 2 times 49. Final answer is 98. And again, uh, I'll show it in my preferred way. Always in my preferred way, you just think working from the inside out. G of negative 2 is negative 7. And then you're going to be evaluating f of negative 7. Okay, now uh, another example, same thing. Let's find out what f of 3 is. That's just replacing x in the f function with 3. And hopefully you see that that's 2 times 9, which is 18. And remember the output from the first function, which we just came up with as 18, becomes the input for the second function. So now you just find g of 18, and you're going to have your answer. So replace x with 18 in the g function. 54 minus 1, final answer is 53. Okay, so you got to look at composite functions. You now know how to do all the operations with functions, add, subtract, multiply, divide, including finding the domain. So uh, I hope that helps you with uh, your assignment. And uh, just contact me if you have any questions.